Yes, um, so hi everybody. It's uh, nice to be here and it's very interesting that uh, it was only one year ago uh, when we were both, uh, all actually, we were in, in, in private sector. Uh, now I have, I'm working for the government. Um, there is a very simple reason for that. Uh, I sold my shares uh, in, in Nortel uh, last year and, and when I sold my shares I got this uh, non-competition clause so I cannot work in the Estonian ICT sector at least two years so, and then our government noticed that and then invited me to, to participate uh, in, in government tasks and uh, yeah, I, I have to say that, that it, it's, it's, it's very interesting and uh, it's very challenging to, to work for Estonian government. Uh, in ICT matters. And what is also good is uh, when I sold my shares, uh, I was lucky to earn enough money so I actually can afford working for Estonian government. But, <laughs> but uh, let's, let's not go to, into this. Uh, today's topic is um, the future of uh, user experience in Estonia. Um, ooh, wow, <laughs> uh, quite interesting. Uh, When I did my slides, I thought like uh, you are much more, way more experienced in this area than me. So uh, what should I, what should I tell you? And um, I started from here. So all Estonians, I hope, uh, know this. This is our government portal. So they basically the, the gateway to to. Uh, to our e-worlds. Even though in Estonia we have uh, 120 different government portals, this is still the main one. And if I say 120 different portals, uh, it, this number doesn't include uh, any local government uh, web pages and, 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 and uh, local government portals. This is the, our tax and custom, they have their own portal. Our Minister of Finance, they have their own portal. Uh, everybody has their own portal or web page with their e-services. So we have to say that it's a quite a mess in Estonia. And we all can understand why there's so, such a mess because uh, basically 10 years ago, uh, what was the number one goal for every ministry? It's quite simple, to put as much functionality into the web as possible. And, and uh, nobody thought uh, about this, that, that these services, they should be easy to use. Uh, actually, how it works in, 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 in government, uh, you create uh, a new rule, a new law. Uh, you state in that law that uh, this specific data set has to be collected. And then you put the same data set into the web and you call it e-service. And then... And, uh, Maybe, maybe somebody will analyze after, I think, three, four, maybe five years, how this e-service is used, and is it used at all? So, you, this might be strange for you, but, but we did some analysis. And, um, for example, in this government portal, there is more than 600 different e-services. There's, no, there, there's not all Eastern e-services, but there's more than 600 of them in our government portal. This is the picture, just uh, one set from the Excel. Uh, this is not, uh, you don't have to read these services here, like most probably you can't, like, uh, especially if you fall back there, you can't read this. Actually, I can't read them even up from here, but, but, but the point of this picture is uh, to look at, at colors. And uh, so our, this is just part of this, from, part from the 600, so uh, to make a point. Our analysis showed that uh, only one third of the services in, in our government portal is easy to use. I mean like, uh, you just go there, you open up the service, you understand uh, what it's for, and it's, it's, you are actually able, uh, without extra knowledge, to complete the, the task. You actually use the service. So only one third is green. One third is yellow. I mean, like, uh, yellow means that uh, uh, 
uh, you need at least uh, a degree in ICT to, to, to make it happen. Uh, but actually it is, with, with that degree, it's, it's, it, you, you, you can complete this, this uh, survey. You actually, you, you, can, you, can, you can go through and then and, and have a result. And one third is totally red. I mean, like, uh, even though you, you, you can be a doctoral degree in, in ICT, you still are not able to, to finish it or use it. What it means? It's catastrophe. Because um, what is different uh, comparing with, for example, internet banks is that uh, the citizens are not uh, interacting with the government uh, on a daily basis. This is not Skype. We are not using it every day. So if, if you think how many times a, a normal, ordinary citizen needs to communicate with the government uh, every year, how many times? One is when we declare our taxes. Um, more or less, not, 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 the, not the best uh, usability, not the best user, user experience, but, uh, but still way better than other countries are doing, so uh, we should be proud and satisfied. Okay, so one. Second. Actually, studies show, are showing that the average number is between two and three that uh, ordinary citizen uh, communicates with the government. And imagine that uh, if it's only two times or three times per year when you act or react with the, with the government, that uh, that experience is, is, let's use a simple word, bad or horrible, or terrifying. And you might uh, understand uh, what is the conclusion to actually make about your own government IT. I think that's, actually that's the one, basic, that's, that's the most important thing why everybody in Estonia thinks that the tiger is dead and should be buried. True. Because if, 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 if every second, if, or if every third experience is bad, why should I trust these solutions? Why should I trust this, these services? So even though we have uh, loads of good and funky stuff in Estonia like uh, e-identification or, or digital signature and things like that, still, this is a mess. But I have a good news. Wait. To make a change, you need three things. Uh, I'm quoting here uh, our uh, Minister of Education, Mr. Ravik. So, uh, to make a change, you need three things. First of all, you need an idea or a business case. You need money. And you need people to actually make the change. Uh, the good news is that uh, thanks to German taxpayer, uh, Estonia has enough money for ICT to make this picture look better. So we all give a good applause to German taxpayer. Uh, that, that's extra, uh, actually the sad poor part that, that uh, in Estonia we mostly do our ICT investments uh, uh, from, from European money, but it's still good. So we have money to make a change. Uh, we have more, three times more money for ICT investments than we had in last period, so money is there. We have, un we have we understood that uh, this situation is not acceptable, so we need to change that. And we need, need, we need new ideas uh, how we're going to change that. And uh, I think this conference uh, definitely will give, give extra, uh, extra ideas uh, how, how to make it better. Uh, and we need good people, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad that, that this room is completely full, basically. It means that there is at least a small chance that you will get something from this conference, and you help, as private sector, you will help to make this picture, this, this, this picture better. So how are we going to do that? We have money, we have people, now the ideas. Um, the problem with Estonia and our ICT investments has been, and it, actually it's not only Estonian problem, it's, it's every government's problem, that um, every government is using uh, taxpayers' money. 
okay, we are using this German stuff, but, but like, uh, like normal country, they use uh, taxpayer money. And uh, if you use taxpayers' money, it's uh, obvious that you have to give a result, and actually you have to deliver a very good results in the first place. So you have to actually give the best solution as, as, a, as a first product. But we all know that mostly the first thing always goes wrong. And there has to be ability to change that, to be so-called agile, to do iterations. Like, okay, we put this e-service up there, now we analyze how it works, uh, how people are using it, uh, we gather different analytics, and we rethink and we redesign it. You can't do that in government sector, because we are using taxpayers' money, and you are not allowed to do mistakes. Nice. Can I continue? Okay. So, you have to, you're not allowed to do mistakes. But if you are not allowed to do mistakes, what it, what it means? It means that you continue to think, to think, to think without doing anything. Or if you do, finally, in the end of the day, the pain is so big that you actually do something, but as you thought about this, uh, like, like three years or two years, the situation has completely changed already. And you are, com you are always late. <laughs> that's funny. So, so that's, that's, I think that's, that's, that, that will be the most, most important thing uh, what, what I and, and my team would like to change during the uh, next uh, couple of years. That we, we change the way of thinking. That it, it is good to do mistakes also in government sector. And then uh, whenever you build something or whenever you, you do a new e-service, you have to have an extra budget to rethink or re-engineer that service after that. Second important point, uh, what happens in Estonia and in the Estonian government sector, what, what is bad at the moment, is that there is no clear responsibility who is in charge of that certain e-service. So in private sector, it's obvious. Like if, you are, if you're a bank and you are, you're offering leasing products, for example, there is a concrete person, you can actually name it, like it's uh, Jan Tamm or Jan Kaisk, who is responsible that we have to sell as much as possible this leasing product through different channels, like through uh, internet bank or through the... Uh, okay. If you want to say it's boring, I can... Like, <laughs> can just, yeah, there, there are much easier ways to say that. Like. So the... the, the, the so what is obvious in private sector is not so obvious in, in, in government sector and especially in Estonia and, and, and that's the second uh, huge change uh, what, we, what they're going to do is that there will be responsible persons uh, in, in, in different ministries, in different departments who actually analyze what happens with their services. Not only with these services but what happens with their services and what could be the best user experience that you actually give to your customer, to the citizen. Or is it worth at all to make it e-service? Maybe it's wise to have a call center or something like that. So the person who actually thinks about that. This will be a huge change. And of course, uh, this, this uh, example actually comes from uh, Denmark. Uh, their government sector uh, uh, discovered that they, will, they are spending uh, 2 billion Danish kronas uh, for sending uh, public sector letters. And they switch to emails. And you can see the benefit from there. So we don't have the similar business case in Estonia, so uh, we're already using emails, but, um, <laughs> okay, try to be funny here. <laughs> but uh, but uh, we can say that even in private sector, Estonia has started, I think, during the last three, four years, to think more about business cases. Is there a value to do a change? Is there a value to provide this or that service differently? Or is there a value to put it more in e-service or compared with, with call center or, 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 or office? 
So that's, that's the second thing, uh, what will change Estonia? And uh, basically what, what we want to have this, is, is this closed loop, that you continuously think about your business cases, your, your, your services, your changes, and you analyze your results, and if there is something worth to change, you will do that. So it's, it's okay to do mistakes even in government sector. Well, it's also good, and what is, wh why I can say that, that all this will change UX knowledge in Estonia heavily during the next five years is because as most of this money will be spent off on re-engineering stuff. It means that Estonia has used to buy these services from the local market. So there's no exchange in Estonia, or, or we don't use uh, these, these big... Uh, uh, global companies uh, so much. Uh, all, uh, one of the reasons why we have those so skilled ICT uh, people in, in Estonia is that uh, our local governments and our private sector uh, bigger spenders, they use Estonian resources for the development. So here also Estonian government will use Estonian people to make a change here. It means that you get skilled, you get the skills. And this will change uh, our, our UX, UX environment. So, and another thing that, that will change the situation is, is this. What is the worst enemy of software development? No, it's not a fixed project. And it's, it's not an idiotic customer also. <laughs> like, there, is a, there is a bigger enemy out there. We have, in government, we have all the time in the world. <laughs> no worries about that. It's not the only government problem, it's also in private sectors. And, uh, yeah. It's legacy. So, a uh, couple of weeks ago, in the same room, uh, there was an argument, like, uh, when I introduced uh, no legacy policy in Estonia. So, uh, we have a plan that there should be a law in Estonia that uh, in Estonia there is no uh, main government register or application that is older than 13 years. So if you have a, like, a public population register, for example, or if you have a uh, or so social, social minister, uh, they have their own registers. Uh, so they have to re-engineer this stuff after, at least after every 13 years. So, because if, if, if you have that, 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 uh, that push, uh, it, it pushes you to, to rethink and, and reanalyze your stuff uh, uh, continuously. I mean, like, um, uh, according to the OECD report, uh, Estonia has the best e-health solutions in the world. On the same time, in Estonia, we know, yeah, okay, they might be the best in the world, but they still... Um, I cannot use that word because I, I heard that uh, there is a Delphi show. Like, so I would like to use uh, the word with S and the final letter is K, four letters. And um, <coughs> so there is huge improvement to do. Also, uh, these applications and solutions were built basically 10 years ago. But the world has changed during the last 10 years. Ten years ago, you only used keyboard and the mouse. Now, you, what you do, like you wipe, like you, you do like this, and so the habits have changed. The knowledge has changed, and the doctors actually want to work differently. They would like to work as, as bartenders in the in, in, in the nightclub, like drinks, cranberry, double check, disease, you know, like. instead of doing this. So this changes. But on the same time, as a government, we built our solution 10 years ago, and they're still one of the best. Actually, they, actually according to OECD report, they are still the best solution in the world. So why the hell we should change that? Yeah, nobody's using it, but like, uh, why, should, why the hell the investment is made, and we are still number one? But I think you can answer that question. You see that, like, if you don't do that, it becomes legacy. And if it becomes Lego Bagazzi, then we face spaghetti architecture, uh, we face uh, 
monolithic concrete core systems that, that, that nobody, uh, nobody wants to touch because if you touch it, like, it breaks. You know that in Finland there is still 5,000 uh, Gobol programmers. 5,000 in Finland. How many Gobol programmers are in Estonia? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. These guys who actually know Gobol in Estonia, they work for Finland. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> no, actually, it's zero. I think. Like, uh, of course, we all can learn that language, but 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 what is what's the point? So um, we all see that the modern world has to be. We have to be able to be agile. It means that we have to be able to to. Uh, uh, invest into new technologies. We have to be able to actually integrate these new technologies into applications. Uh, we have to change our processes because, because the world changes. There are new laws from Europe that needs to be implemented. So we have to be able to be flexible. But you can be flexible only if you have a legacy part is, 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 is very limited. Then you can be flexible. So it might be a good idea you have this kind of policy. Let's see if we are successful to, to actually, actually fulfill that. But, but at least let's try. Yeah. Trying is the first step towards failure, as you know. Okay, that's our beauty. In every conference we have to show that, actually. <laughs> But what is good is uh, that, that uh, our, our, our brothers in Finland uh, are actually starting to use the same solution. And what is important here is now we actually can combine our, 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 our minds or, or resources. So Estonians shouldn't think that we, we are smarter or, or, or more bright than, than, than Finnish people. We are not, definitely no. But what we should do is, is to put investment money together, the best knowledge together, and create next versions of this kind of stuff. The next challenge, what will be and what will change our UX experience and your experience, that all these services and, and, and things that we have built uh, during the last 20 years, this has to be connected with Europe, at least with Europe, during the next seven, eight years. Uh, because it's, it's funny that we can actually travel without showing our passport. If, if you go to Finland, like, we can just travel uh, without showing any ID to anybody. But you actually, to, to move some data from Estonia to Finland, you have to print it out, take a ferry, Helsinki, and you give the paper, and there is a lady who actually types it back into the system. On the same time, both countries are, <laughs> we can say, heavily ICT advanced, or like, they, we are ICT countries, both countries are ICT countries. Why we, why we have to do that? So it will change, and thanks to this, even, even, even more rapidly, but, but uh, for your eyes it means that whatever you design, or whatever you, you actually plan to do, or like, how, how you build your services, you have to take, keep this in mind, how it can work for outsiders, how our services will, will work together with, with, with different applications from different countries, with different technologies. So, uh, I have a good news. Uh, the, the challenges are getting more and more difficult. And it's good, because we like challenges. We all like challenges, right? Okay. And, um, yeah. What is more important even here is, is, uh, is the services and the way how we designed our solutions uh, 10 years ago. I think you all agreed that the, the rules and the understanding, for example, for uh, cybersecurity was totally different 10 years ago uh, compared with the, with, the with the situation now. And again, uh, uh, why your tasks are more, more comp uh, complicated now is uh, Luckily, Estonia has done uh, these huge reforms already in 2001-2002. I mean, I mean, like yeah, this uh, e-authentication and digital signature and X-Road and stuff like that. So uh, our people actually trust our ICT solutions, even though one third is not working, but uh, they still trust it. Uh, it's not the same uh, in other countries. 
And then I, I did understand that uh, with one hand, uh, Germany is very angry about US uh, for spying. But on the same time, they have to understand that they are not able to do their digital reforms without trust from their own citizen. So when you build your services, it's not only, your goal is not to be easy to use, but as your main goal is that people actually should use your services. It means that the trust is also important, or building that trust is also important, not only on political level anymore, but on your level also. And that's one extra aspect, why it changes the way how you do UX and usability during next years. So, uh, please, can I have this video running? There's a video, should be coming, it's coming. It's coming uh, through snail mail or? We just finished the drive. It was incredibly stressful. It was the most stressful drive I've ever been on. Nevertheless, I think we have a lot of great content to measure road frustration because I'm certainly frustrated at this point. So we were just sideswiped, um, and right now my stress level should be through the roof. Um, we got the information, you know, we'll have to process the data and, and see where it's really at. This video was provided by MIT Sensible Lab uh, uh, people. It's a great video. And uh, it's, it's inspiring because um, it also shows like how, the cha how, how it changes how we do, how, how actually we collect, analyze this uh, analytics uh, to do, uh, to actually plan these business cases. And, and uh, for example, if, if they take uh, road construction or like how, how you plan your, your city roads, uh, Currently, what Estonia is doing is that like, we basically have these uh, rub uh, ropes on the, on the street and, then, and if, if, if you drive it over, the, it calculates that yeah, one car passed. Like, and then we uh, sum it up and we say that, okay, uh, there is 500 uh, cars per, per, per 10 minutes going, so we, we, should, we should do something there. But instead of doing that, we should use these kind of methods to get the best user experience uh, on our roads. I think, uh, if you go from, come from Pirita to Tallinn Central City in the morning, if you calculate the frustration uh, on, on that road every morning, I think we, can, we could heat up some small cities in, in Estonia with, with, with energy provided uh, uh, behind the wheel. So um, that's a good news. And it means that uh, the, your life is, changed, is changing. Uh, you have dif more difficult challenges, uh, but if you have good ideas, you have money. So it should be a good combination. And we have a goal. We really want like to build the best uh, information society uh, in one country in the world. So and I really challenge you to be part of the trip and give your effort to be successful, successful 
with the scope. So, thank you. Thank you. And now there is probably a lot of people in the audience who are willing to tape, uh, take up the German taxpayers' money that uh, Tavi is offering. So, please, uh, wave your hand and ask for a microphone, or unless I will be asking questions myself. So, the uh, first questions. I just, uh, before you ask something, I'll just say that uh, everything what we do or we don't do affects our children. So, uh, be wise. And don't do many mistakes. So uh, I would like to come back to the slide where you had these spreadsheets with the services. Uh, you had listed like 600 services and uh, uh, as we know all of them are usually provided by different organizations in the government by different ministries and you also propose this challenge of actually improving the quality of those services. Uh, my question would be um, how is it going to happen if uh, as far as I know in the ministries we don't have uh, really people who are um, qualified or have the necessary training in the terms of human factors, uh, user experience, interaction design. So we have technical people, we have people who can develop, uh, we have people who understand kind of the system behind it, but we don't really have the people who are m maybe qualified uh, on this human aspects point of view. And how is that going to actually work? It's a good question. They don't also have any programmers or, or good analysts in, in their organizations or, or good quali uh, quality managers. So what, how it works basically in Estonia is uh, all the critical or actually hard tasks are outsourced. That's why I, why I, exp I explained that, that most of this money that comes from the market actually comes to you because uh, you're absolutely right. Like uh, government institutions, even uh, private companies, they, they don't have... Uh, enough uh, resources to, to complete these tasks. So they have to outsource it. So they have to buy these services from the market. So that's the point. Uh, but maybe there's a challenge with that. If you outsource, then the company you're outsourcing to, you're just doing one project. So there's no kind of continuous vision of how this service or thing should develop over time. It's just you're just doing snapshots of it. Yep. The, uh, what else I mentioned is that uh, there has to be, um, so the, the product manager, so called product manager, has to be uh, in, in minister's payroll. So if, if, if he or she is responsible for one, three or ten services, uh, it depends uh, how heavily they are used and how complex they are, but, but uh, the point is that the product manager, so called knowledge, has to, has to be part of ministry's uh, labor force. Then. So uh, this has to be built. Yeah, that's the challenge. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, can somebody pass the microphone to? Uh, uh, because we, we are streaming also, it's, it's good. Can you send the microphone up? Sure. Please, and there is, oh, okay, there is another, another microphone here, okay. Who was the next question? Next. Okay, I already have it. Okay, uh, uh, mm -hmm. One moment, please. Yeah. I, w I would just want to continue that question and ask on behalf of designers is that Finnish government is already hiring the designers on, a, on the positions in the, in the government or ministries. So when will Estonia start doing that? I mean like government uh, hiring uh, designers? Finnish government, yes. They have, I already read several of them. I'm not there working only because I don't speak Finnish, unfortunately. Yeah, but that's good. That I'm not speaking Finnish, or <laughs> you know, like uh, uh, different countries are using different development models. Like, for example, Swedes they uh, they outsource. Actually, they, they do body leasing. So basically, what they do is they, they, they buy bodies and uh, who actually work in in their uh, in their rooms on a daily basis. Uh, in Estonia, we use different approach. Uh, more in Estonia, we outsource. We don't do body leads, but we outsource uh, certain business cases or tasks uh, to the private companies. And we, we, uh, we continue to do that. So uh, uh, what will happen during next year, as we have this uh, huge amount of investment money, and actually the money, uh, it, it is big. 
the number, the, 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 the amount of money is, is huge. And uh, so uh, if there's money, there's a problem you saw on the, on, on, on the spreadsheet, uh, there's a need, uh, something has to happen. So yes, ministry will uh, start ordering in different times, most probably, but, but uh, there will be more and more uh, improvement work coming to the private market. So basically in Estonia, you should be part of any private company or you should start your own private company and you should offer these services to, this, to the government. I know like different, uh, there are different people who are actually doing uh, usability and, and, and UX uh, work for the market already and they are all hired. So uh, it's, it's the final point to create your own company. I, I must uh, add, though, so that I think you need to have design thinking inside government because uh, a couple of months ago somebody was buying design for uh, ASD.de and wanting to find uh, accessibility competent designing company and one of the terms was that uh, uh, none of the elements on the website should flash more than three times uh, per second and this was 2013 summer uh, public tender so and when we discussed with the tender initiator, it turned out that uh, they do have the competence to uh, procure uh, database development and stuff like that, but they don't have competence to uh, do design tenders. So I, I think there is definitely a need for some kind of uh, 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 head of, uh, head of uh, design of that. And there is uh, one more thing which I have been uh, seeing lately is that uh, Yes, you can make your company and participate in tenders. The last one, uh, or one, one of before last where I participated, was asking for design concepts from 10 competing companies. This is com called totally stupid spec work. I can use the word stupid because I'm not in the government. Uh, uh, never ever have state agencies or state companies ask competing work from uh, 10 makers because they can't uh, uh, invest so much time in uh, so little uh, possibility, especially when the tender documents are poorly written and non-conclusive and the answer to the tender questions are uh, not conclusive also. And one third thing is that uh, don't uh, fragment the tasks because I've been part of very s several projects where I see that uh, one part has been done by one company, then comes in the next guys who are giving the next ideas and actually there is nobody with the vision. So actually the question of the chief designer is very important. But sorry, there was uh, another question somewhere there. <laughs> can, I, can I also comment? No, I mean, yeah, okay, we we'll an answer also. <laughs> I totally agree that, that uh, you need this design engineers and user experience and usability knowledge also on government side, definitely. Like, uh, there has to be um, so some, some cool practices described and, and, and shared. Uh, I do totally agree that uh, the tender like you described is, is, is absolute ridiculous. Uh, so uh, yeah, there are good things with our government and there are bad things. Like, um, so you win some, you lose some. Yeah. I have actually a question. Um, so. w when you talk about the um, no legacies policy. Who's, who's talking? I'm talking. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah. When you talk about the no legacies policy, uh, my concern is that changing basically from COBOL to Java does not bring you the advantage that you're looking for, rather than um, you have to also look into the um, legal space. For instance, if you look at the um, National Documents Registry, you have to have the most perfect cash system in the world because you're not allowed to issue documents before the citizen has paid the fee. Um, the tax office already has the most perfect um, um, money system to calculate the finances, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so what I'm thinking that is all, that you also have to change the um, legal uh, room for the new um, IT systems to be more effective and uh, to increase the actually the user experience. Thank you. Uh, please stand up, all the people from Ita office. Uh, from the room. They're doing that. Okay, thank you. Okay. I'm um, absolutely right. And uh, um, you have to change the legal system, but also you have to change the working processes, etc. That was my whole point, that, that you have to re-engineer. 
If we, if we do the, we try to think that if we say that we have to work with the legacy system, uh, we try to minimize it to, to COBOL versus Java. But it's not so, I'm absolutely right. And it's not only, uh, the number one is not the IT process uh, or IT project. The number one is the business case. The best service is the service that doesn't exist. Please remember that. Because like, I was in, I was in Sweden uh, this spring and I was uh, asked to, to give a speech in, in, in Stockholm and uh, Ekki Rasuk, uh, students know that guy, worked in Minister of Economy uh, back then. And I asked him, like, I have to give, give a speech in Stockholm, like, uh, you have lived in Stockholm, like, uh, four or five years, like, uh, can you say loudly out that, that these are the things that are better in Estonia compared to Sweden? And he, like, he, he, he said, okay, uh, let me think, like, and he, he took uh, two days for him to answer me. And he, his answer was that there's nothing better in, in Estonia than in, in, in Stockholm. I was like, Wow, wow, wow. We have all this e stuff, you know, like, like we have digital signature, we have all this e identification. Like, uh, how you can say that, that like we are not better than Swedes? We should be, but we are not. And the, 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 the answer he uh, told me, even though there is loads of uh, paperwork still in, 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 in Swedish government, or like bureaucracy, uh, it's seamless. It happens somewhere behind. So, for example, if a child is born in Estonia, uh, the child gets the social security ID, the number. Uh, so basically, the government knows the child was born. But still, the mother or, or the father has to apply for support money. In Sweden, if a child, was, child is born, everything happens. The money starts to happen in your account or appear in your account. Everything is seamless. Even though it's on paper, the, I mean the background work is on paper, it's seamless. So whose, whose services are better? Yeah, we have, you, you, you actually, you can use e-service to apply to this money in Estonia. <laughs> we gave out the social security ID, so we know that. And everybody gets it in Estonia. Why the hell you have to apply? So you've got the point. Okay, okay. next. One, one last question. Hello. Yeah. Uh, what is your opinion about uh, developing language-specific techno technologies in Estonia? Like, for instance, um, speech recognition, semantical analysis, and um, how should it be developed? How important is it? Is it um, nice to have thing or necessary? Or what's your view about this? Uh, it's, it's a very good question. Uh, one thing... Uh, uh, what is Estonia has done differently compared with other countries is that we use this um, uh, distributed architecture uh, approach. It means that uh, every house, every ministry, every, every department is responsible of their own IT or ICT development. Yes, there are some common practices, some, some, some good practices uh, described, but basically we, we can't go and say that, okay, you have to do this or you have to do that or you have to use these technologies or you, you have to use these methods. It's not so. So um, what I actually believe is that um, uh, different situations need different approaches and uh, different solutions. And uh, I think Estonia continues to, to go that way that uh, if there is something, something new, sexy appearing, then most probably the more innovative uh, uh, ministers and departments are starting to use it. Uh, Estonia mainly it starts actually from banks and, and, and telecom companies and, and uh, if it's a good, uh, if this, this practice justifies uh, their uh, existence, it will be used uh, heavily in other areas. But uh, I also, I, I do agree that, that we should try out and, 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 and use this, these new modern, how to say, approaches, methodologies to do that. Thank you, uh, David. I will be once uh, moderating from the back because I want. Can, can we switch to the my iPad for a moment? Uh huh. Uh, I, I have a tradition of uh, giving out a uh, prize to uh, some usability-related uh, thing each year or design-related thing. Uh, two years ago, it was LHV's uh, Internet Bank. Last year, it was the uh, non-working contraptions. Uh, in uh, Tallinn Teletorn. And this year, I think the competition has been fierce. 
but uh, my, uh, in my conclusion, my moral price goes to the uh, patient portal of uh, e-Tervis. And uh, as you see, it's very modern looking, it's flat design, tiles like on this uh, Microsoft thingy, there's page, uh, uh, the Estonian painting, paintings to lower the stress level of uh, users. And uh, as Tavi, when we before speak, uh, talked, he pointed out that this is also the good example of patients being able to uh, see who has been accessing their uh, data. And uh, this is internationally told that it is so. Uh, I managed to break some reefs this summer, and so I went to see and didn't uh, find. I didn't find all of the data. I didn't find all of the accesses. By the way, this is uh, currently the only system in Estonia which uh, supposedly shows some of the logs of access to your data. And uh, I was a long time thinking, uh, are they worth the uh, Marvet annual uh, prize? And I found that, yes, when I came to this uh, screen. This is actually my personal data, so... Mm, <coughs> uh, uh, but no, no, nothing uh, too personal, hopefully, here. And uh, what I would like to draw your attention to is that I... Unfortunately, I can't switch it into English because Estonia is a startup country, so who cares about English speakers? <laughs> they come here to do startups and uh, learn Estonian in a way. But I especially like that uh, here is, for example, a uh, picture of uh, X-ray of me. And there is actually two buttons under it. And these are practically the only interactions I see in the system. Uh, and uh, they are related, if uh, somebody can translate from Estonia, when they come back, uh -huh. uh, close the access to my data for doctor. So we do have a very nice looking, very interactive, flat design, everything portal that uh, has single functionality to, ne to, ne to deny access to doctors to my data. And then we are in the position of asking that uh, why the heck people don't use the system. If I would be doctor and somebody would be building for me a system that's main functionality is to disable my access, then I definitely would be thinking about putting my data into it. So thank you and oh, uh, oh, oh. greetings to everybody. No, 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 no. Uh, just uh, to cover the English part, uh, this is actually very important, especially for students. Uh, most probably we will start issuing uh, ID cards for uh, non-residential people next year, in the end of next year. Most probably, it's, it's still, uh, there's, there's a political uh, decision needed. But uh, it means that, uh, uh, I mean, like, uh, the people outside from Estonia uh, who are, like, um, who are the board members of the companies or, 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 or professors or students uh, who don't have their residential uh, ID card uh, will get the non-residential ID card. It means that it's a, it, it's, it's a card without a picture, so it's, a, it's not a tower document, uh, but you can use it for uh, accessing Estonian e-services and, and, and digital signature and stuff like that. So if you have a board member from Sweden, you don't have to send papers uh, for signing anymore, so you actually can, can, can be very, very flexible here. So what it means is basically as all the well, not all, but, 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 but most of these services are open, opened up also for, for foreign people. There has to be English support, at least English, most probably even Russian. Yeah, and this was actually the main point, point where I was, yeah, thanks for music. I <laughs> uh, was uh, trying to say that when I've been looking around, I'm seeing too little uh, translations of uh, most of the things I've been trying to demonstrate uh, Estonian uh, e-government solutions and uh, it seems that it's uh, not doable in uh, other language than it's in Estonian. But uh, anyway, we yeah. are going now to the lunch break. Before that, thanks to Davi Gotka and a <laughs> present uh, including the IT-themed uh, wine.